Kaislin George. I'm born in Cape Town 1972. I've met the, my husband here in the Eastern Cape and we got married to in now 1994 we got married. I've got two daughters, a son and one grandson. And we um I've started with um, a soup kitchen in in 2009 and then we 2011 I register a NGO on meals and wheels I'm still cooking up till today so it's a quite a long time we do get challenges but we carry through my our god is he he preserve he looks after us and if we do short there is uh, like we scrape together the the money to still carry on with the pots but i do get a monthly subsidy from meals and wheels head office and it's just a small amount but the lord has stretched it so far and then 2016 um i've done the home base care and then i started seen that the community needed someone and most of them then ran to came to me and asked me if I don't want to assist with them certain things like um ask asking me maybe to help with adult napkins or even to go and assist with any um any help like bathing patients maybe even seeing to babies because sometimes a mother don't have a mother or grandma near so i assist with that my father has been so good to us he always give me that strength to go the extra mile to help people one of my beneficiaries came out to me and asked me to assist them i actually knew this young lady is pregnant but i didn't think it was a due date yet so but in any case before i went on my way out i asked god to give me that necessary wisdom because i don't know what is waiting for me when i got there i found out the the woman is busy in labor and i just said oh my gosh and and then i went for it and i said come mommy come push and then she pushed and the baby was born i could at least Luckily we do have paramedics around us and I could send one of them to go and ask for the warm blanket and then he came and he helped me because he had to cut the follicle cord cuz that I, I will never touch that part but I'm so glad today these four of them that always say hello auntie I said yeah but my gang it my mommy see so he's my mommy <laughs> May it made me so proud really because I thought wow just to to catch a baby and you don't know anything about it that it was a really really a a, a proud uh, uh, to be excited for when I started me when I started facing such a lot of challenges in my life Actually while I was on this when I was cooking lot of times things happened to me and I couldn't work things out but the first thing that you should go to is to our father in heaven after they have laid down the challenges to him they can get someone a trustworthy person and a an elderly person to discuss the challenges and and then they can also get like help from this uh, elderly person will assist them but the best thing is to really um to really give it to the lord and he will work things for you he will make things easier he will even put someone on your road that will assist you with that challenge seen that i am cooking from my home it's now a few years that i know i'm still fighting for a plot but seen that it's now a few years i'm cooking from my house 
I can't. It's difficult for me to balance because I can't say my two days are over for the week. My doors are closed till next week because they come to my door. If I can assist them, I assist them. But if I can't, then I tell them I can't now. I will. I will rather prefer them than to someone else. But um, I'm glad I have a husband that's understanding and that allowed me to cook from my house and to distribute from my home because I distribute from my home and then I still go to other points too. But if you don't have a good understanding, I don't know where I would have said today. But I thank the Lord for that, for having a good understanding relationship with my husband. And my children are always there. My two daughters are big. The one is 29 and the one is 24. So it's always one of them. They're working at the clinic, but they never work together in one day. So there's always one that's with me. They say, Mommy, come, let me help you quick. And other days when they were working together, I had to battle through my, on my own. Because um, I understand the beneficiaries are all struggling. They won't be able to come and help you just with a plate of food. They will say, no, I want something. You'll have to pay me for the day. But I thank the Lord that I have children that's understanding and always helpful. They will always say, no, mommy, I'll do this for you. Mommy, no, I'll do that for you. So... My team, we work as a team and we are Christians and with the Lord beside us, anything is possible. A successful woman is um, when you put others before yourself. Because that is where I have started. My mentor is to put my needs above us. And that is how I turned out today to be that person. So all I can say is that they must always, they mustn't let um, circumstances get them down. As soon as they feel they're down, they must just stand up and just move on. And our Father in heaven will take it further. And it will also bring them out there where they want to be. And also what I want to say is, in our lifetime, a woman got to be educated, got to be in a career where she can one day help her husband and her family and grow and, and, and move together. Because a husband and a, a husband can't do it alone. In the olden days it was possible but not in our lifetime. Education is very important. You, we mustn't think when we are in school as teenagers. We mustn't think, um, I don't need grade 12, I can finish grade 10. Because even grade 12 is too little. We have to go and study and become something in life. And if we're able to, um, we got to educate ourselves. And then once we educate ourselves and we are in a good job and start a family, then we must be able to work with the husband. And we got to educate your children again too. Because we as, we as women are there for our children. Because it's very seldom that the children will maybe run to a daddy. They'll always talk to mommy. So we as women got to work from day one. Up till day we see our children are sorted out. And, we, and I am still, still equipping myself. I'm doing short courses that is helping me through this lifetime. I'll maybe stop when I'm 60, but I still got a few years to go before 60. So never, must never think that um, I'm useless. I can't do it because there's no such thing as I can't do it. We will, 
we will always there will always be a way where we can equip ourselves it don't need to just be studying we can even do it practical things too i honor all women to put that extra mile into what they want to become although you maybe still don't know what you want what is your journey ahead but you can still decide why you still in school so i will say to the teenage girls don't don't think to don't think you are not worth it because practical things like need, doing needle work doing nothing such things you can start from from a at school and then you can take it even further the ease courses that you can do if you don't really don't know what to do with yourself that will equip you and you will take it further from there and maybe when you decided which direction then you can go further